With near three decades of excellence in higher Islamic education, students from almost 20 countries, a focus on religious education with school subjects, and hundreds of graduates serving around the world. This is Darul Uloom Pretoria. رمضان تجلى وابتسم طوبى للعبد إذا تنما رمضان تجلى وابتسم بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم اللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبنا وافتح لنا أبواب رحمتك أعوذ بالله العظيم بوجه الكريم وبسلطانه القديم من الشيطان الرجيم To all our viewers السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته For the past two months we have been reading this dua اللهم بارك لنا في رجب وشعبان وبلغنا رمضان That O oh Allah grant us blessings and barakah in the month of Rajab and Sha'ban and let us reach the month of Ramadan. Indeed, all praises are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He has let us witness yet again this blessed month of Ramadan. And if we are in good health, then more thankfulness, more shukr is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as we know how many people were with us last year, how many people celebrated Eid with us last year, but this year, unfortunately, they are not with us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them the highest stages in Jannah. What is the main objective of this month of Ramadan? The objective is to fulfill one of the pillars of Islam, which is to fast in the month of Ramadan. And the mercy in this month, the Holy Prophet ﷺ has said, إِذَا جَاءَ رَمَضَانْ فُتِحَتْ أَبْوَابُ الْجَنَّةِ وَغُلِقَتْ أَبْوَابُ النَّارِ That when the month of Ramadan comes, then know that the doors of Jannah are opened and the doors of the fire, the, the doors of hell are closed. What is actually meant here is that the doors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy is open to his servants. As we have said, our objective is to fast in this blessed month. And in order to do something like that, in order to fulfill a pillar of Islam, it is necessary that we have adequate information, we have enough knowledge on how to do it. And therefore today our topic is those actions which nullify one's fast. Because if our fast is broken, then it is necessary for us to perform that fast again, to do that fast again as qadha. And how do we know if our fast is accepted? How do we know if our fast is broken? Today, inshallah, we will be doing the discussion, we will be discussing those actions which break one's fast. Before we continue, let us listen to a few verses of the Holy Quran pertaining to this blessed month. And for that, I would like to call upon Qadi Zubair Mbata. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون أياما معدودات فمن كان منكم مريضا أو على سفر فعدة من أيام أخر وعلى الذين يطيقونه فدية طعام مسكين فمن تطوع خيرا فهو خير له وأن تصوموا خير لكم إن كنتم تعلمون 
شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان فمن شهد منكم الشهر فليصم ومن كان مريضا أو على سفر فعدة من أيام أخر يريد الله بكم اليسر ولا يريد بكم العسر ولتكملوا العدة ولتكبروا الله على ما هداكم ولعلكم تشكرون صدق الله العظيم ما شاء الله that was indeed a beautiful passage of the Holy Quran speaking about the fast of the month of Ramadan and inshallah we will get to know more about the rulings of fasting in this blessed month and for that we have with us one of the leading scholars of the Gauteng province Mufti Muhammad Usman Sulehdi Saab who is also a, an educator at the South African Islamic College as well as a graduate of Jamia Razviya Ziaul Ulum Rawalpindi Pakistan Mufti Saab there are many questions which has been posed concerning those actions which nullify one's fast. So, what is some of the most common actions which break one's fast? If we look at the definition of fast, it clear that which things break our fast. Because the linguistic meaning of song in Arabic is to stop. To stop what? In, in the term of that fasting that we can say that so meaning, fasting meaning to stop one from eating, from drinking, or having intercourse, from tulue fajr, meaning when fajr time start, till gurube shams, meaning when sunset. So in that period, if somebody eat or drink, or do intercourse purposely, obviously his fast break. Mufti Saab, as you've mentioned, eating, drinking, we are in the first few days of Ramadan and it is, we are still getting into the groove of fasting. It is not yet a, something which is common to us, something which we are used to. So it could happen that some of us, by mistake, forgetfully eat something, drink something, just out of habit. Would this then break one's fast? Does he have to perform, make gada of that fast? Or what will be the ruling? <laughs> Maybe I say uh, that is the mercy for that person. That, uh, that he ate and still his fast never break. Actually, uh, what Sharia says about that, because even in a hadith it is mentioned that if somebody eat or drink forgetfully, his fast will not break. Uh, in fact, it is mentioned clearly if somebody is eating forgetfully, he, do, he, he forgot that he's fasting and he's still eating. If somebody see him, he must stop him in that case if he feel this person can survive. Meaning he has enough power to survive in his fast. So rather the one who see him, he must stop him. If he's not stopping, this is makru for him, the one who saw him. And if he feel that person, the one who is eating forgetfully, he is weak. He, he, he cannot survive. He cannot complete his fast. And he is eating forgetfully. In that case, rather he leave him. And in other words, reminding him will be makru. So, so that's the thing. That is indeed something which we needed to be reminded of. And this shows, as Mufti Sahib has explained and said, that it is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is so merciful to his servants that he knows we are weak, that we err at times, we make mistakes. But still, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not make it hard upon us. Moving on to the next question, vomiting. Concerning vomiting, there are different types of vomiting. And what would be the ruling in that? For example, as we mentioned that we are still going into the groove of Ramadan and some people have a weak digestive system, perhaps they eat a heavy sahri, some eat a light sahri and this changes in the body sometimes can cause vomiting. 
although there are others who have ulcers and this causes vomiting of a different type. So would the ruling be the same for all types of vomiting or can Mufti Sab go in depth explaining that? If vomiting that happen itself, no matter it is little or it is full of mouth, as long as it is happening itself, in that case, it does not break your fast. And even for further, for example, that uh, uh, to explain further, that if vomit came itself, somebody never did purposely, if it came itself and something is gone back into his stomach, even that thing will not break his fast. But be very careful in that matter that this vomit we are talking which happened itself. If somebody did, you know, that uh, purposely, obviously the ruling is different. Moving on to the next question, which I think is important, is these are questions that haven't been asked before, situations that haven't been experienced before. As we are in the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic, this makes a huge difference to us as Muslims, to the way we fast, to the rulings pertaining to fasting. Of course, we know a person who is unable to fast, then he is exempted. He is not forced to fast. But in this situation, we are talking about a person who is able to fast and willing to fast, but he is in need of oxygen, artificial oxygen, perhaps every two hours, every four hours. Would taking artificial oxygen break or affect one's fast? Oxygen is the need of a person to survive, to live, as even artificial oxygen in this pandemic or there is a need because of the weakness of lungs, if somebody is taking oxygen, it does not break fast as long as this oxygen is clear. For example, if that oxygen is passed through a, a pipe, which pipe is uh, crystal, meaning you can see from that, so there is no color, there, uh, there is uh, no smell, no taste. So that type of oxygen, there is no medicine is mixed in that. If that type of oxygen is taken, so obviously that oxygen do not break fast because it is the need of human body to, to survive. That's... Mufti Sab, as you have said that it is important that it is clear, there is no taste, smell and so on. What about those people who utilize inhalers or uh, steamers? Apart from the vapor that is going in, there is usually a very strong scent normally of camphor or mint. So would these break or affect one's fast? Obviously, any anything that such as you did mention, for example, if we, if we look in the ingredients of inhaler, what happened that uh, an amount of medicine is there. So if we are taking that medicine, so we are taking purposefully, obviously that break fast. So as I said, if there's any medication is mixed into that, even oxygen, if you are taking oxygen and the color or something that uh, medicine is mixed, it will break fast. And here I want to say, obviously they are few or many people in this world that uh, those are in the need of inhaler, they have to inhale. So maybe they act like they are fasting. And uh, if they cannot fast forever, obviously, so they have to give fidya for that. And uh, they give fidya because they are ma'azur in the sight of Sharia. So they give fidya, but they act like they are fasting, meaning eat sahri, stop themselves from drinking, eating or any other thing doing while they are inhaling and uh, hope, keeping hope from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them the reward of fasting. However, the fatwa of ulama is that inhaler break fast. While we are in this topic of the COVID-19 pandemic, there are people who are in need to go for the COVID-19 test 
and the times which you are able to do it is usually the times which we are fasting and even hospitals doesn't accept you without having this pass this test so taking the test is putting something in the nose but there is no medicine in it it is just taken out so would this break once fast uh, we we actually if we talk about the uh, corona test we we have to see that what is the situation of that swab that they put in the nose or into the throat if that swab has any medicine or any wet thing then obviously it will break fast because you are entering something into your system into your brain or into your stomach through your throat and if that swab has no medicine is not wet it is just for the purpose to take a mucus that will not break fast as it is mentioned in fatul qadir that fast break mimma yudkhilu wala mimma yukhraj that it break from that what you may enter not what you take out so if you are just taking mucus it does not break fast but if you enter something with that meaning there is a medicine or there is something wet it will break fast speaking of administering something to your body the same what certain countries have it is mandatory for them to take the vaccine before traveling or so on so taking the vaccine firstly would this break once fast and secondly there are many people who have to take insulin some administer it manually some have a device which automatically administers the insulin every hour or every few hours would this break fast as it is something which is entered in the body in other words this is the discussion of injection drip it it fall in the same category in the ulama they they are discussing and i will say that in past if we see our history even there were disputes but in this modern era in this current era that uh, ulama are agreed upon that if any injection because injection they say it it to not that medicine is not going directly to our stomach or our brain so in that case for example any injection is taken that does not break fast but i will say we should try our best not to take the injections during the fast if it is necessary that uh, then maybe we may we can take because fatwa is there that uh, it does not break the fast concerning that what about shots such as the vitamin b12 these are shots which give one energy and immediately you feel energy so people will say that it even helps them to fast better as perhaps they were feeling weak before the shot and now they are rejuvenated would this now break one's fast for taking any vitamin or i will say any medicine which boosts your body which gives energy to your body we we rather should see it in two ways either it is for the purpose of medication or it is for the purpose to boost or to get energy if it is for the purpose of medication and as i mentioned it is not going to your stomach or it is not uh, going to your brain so then that will not break fast but it should not be taken for the purpose of energy or for the purpose of boosting your body because in other words that will be like a gaza that uh, you are nourishing your body and, and sharia is stopping us to eat and any food nourish our body mm. so so we are nourishing in other way so it it should not be done during the fast mufti sir concerning siwak the use of miswak during one's fast is it allowed uh, according to imam azam abu hanifa rahimahullah it is permissible to do miswak no matter somebody is doing miswak after sahri after fajr during the day afternoon even just before that uh, asr or after asr it is permissible nowadays we find that we have substituted the miswak with toothbrush and toothpaste so would the ruling be the same for this 
Actually, we should try our best, uh, number one, to use even out of Ramadan miswak as it is Sunnah. And uh, there are many benefits, spiritually and physically. Uh, and second thing that uh, during Ramadan, when we are fasting, someone should not may use the toothpaste because in toothpaste there is a smell. And might some ingredients of the toothpaste go to his throat and then it could reach to the stomach. If it do not reach, still it is makru because it, it has smell. So that smell affects your fast. So that's why you uh, should avoid from that. So the best in this situation is to brush the teeth before we finish with the time of sehdi and then during and the then day. And then after iftarji. And then exactly. during the day we can use miswak. Miswak, exactly. That's fine. Jazakallah Mufti Sahib, we thank you for joining us today. And whatever we have said, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from us. And if there is any mistake, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. Amen. And this was indeed a very important discussion. To all the viewers, we thank you for watching. However, it is your responsibility now, if you have heard it, you have understood it, to pass it on to your family members, to pass it on to your friends. Because this falls under one of the pillars of Islam to fast in the month of Ramadan. So we should all try to educate ourselves and educate others on how to do this correctly. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. <laughs>